Just that. <laughs> well, I think with each case, first Alex and I will get together and kind of talk about the history of the dog and try to come up with a good strategy that makes sense based on positive science-based solutions. Yeah, and I think we're very good at brainstorming. So first, we are not afraid of, you know, saying anything. So we just talk about a bunch of things. And then we start, you know, like deciding which ones we're gonna follow through. And what I love working with Alex, we're both very creative and I think nowadays people live very busy lives. They have lifestyles where it might be difficult to integrate dog training. So Alex and I always like to think about how can we creatively help this person to make training an easier part of their life. Yeah, and, and I think Laura, you know, likes the, the fun and she, she puts fun in it. So everybody enjoying doing it and we always try to, you know, make it fit in the person's schedule. We don't always agree with each other, but we respect each other. What we can always agree is that the woman is always right. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, I think Alex and I, although we might not agree on every single thing, we have a strong, deep respect for one another, and we know that we're both thinking about dog training from the most humane, ethical standpoint. So, you know, if there's something that we might disagree on, we can listen to each other's side and, you know, maybe talk to the client, see which, which way they want to try. And of course, we always learn. So sometimes I take one approach, she takes another one. But if her approach works better, why not? If it's more fun for the dog, I want to do it the same. Some will like, you know, my style and some will prefer yours. Well, I also think that every family has a different goal, has a different end goal, and people have different expectations of their dogs. People have different amounts of times that they're able to dedicate to training. If somebody's in a more desperate, time-sensitive situation, they might be needing results more quickly, uh, whereas some people are okay to spend more time doing things patiently and slowly. One of the things I'm most excited about with the show is helping the general public learn how to better understand their dogs, learn how to read body language, and learn how to see the world through a dog's point of view. I mean, dogs, when they are noticing the world, they can smell how many smells through their olfactory glands? Yeah. You're the scientist. No, 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 it's, <laughs> it, it, it's like a billion, you know, it's just too many, it's just too many. Infinitely, yeah. it's infinitely <laughs> yeah. greater than ours. I think that one of the biggest mistakes is people don't know how to correct the bad behavior. So what they do is like they get mad at the dog, they don't, don't want to talk to the dog, they arrive, you know, two hours later when they see something wrong, they call the dog, they show it to the dog and they think the dog understands everything they're saying and they're doing it all wrong. And I think one of the biggest challenges is that people don't actually take the time to teach dogs new things. So I'll walk into a situation where they'll say, oh, my dog just doesn't listen to me. And I'm like, well, did you train your dog to come when called? Did you even take the time to teach your dog their name? So sometimes the most basic things, people think their dogs understand and they don't realize dogs don't born knowing how to speak English. So it's up to us as people to start teaching them to communicate in our language. Yeah, exactly. Not just because they react to what we're saying, like say, no, you cannot do this, or who did that? And they will react looking at you with sad eyes. Not because, you know, they can understand emotion. They don't understand exactly what we're saying always. Of course, they can understand a few things, but not like, oh, half an hour ago you did this, and now I'm punishing you for that. So that's, that's not fair. And another thing, I, I think, you know, every time that you say a no to a dog and you want to stop a behavior, you have to think of something that the dog needs to be able to do it. So like that, you're going to improve its life. It's, it's bad to be in a house that you cannot do anything. You Absolutely. cannot dig uh, the pot, you cannot bark at the neighbor, you cannot you bite on visitors. The strangers. Yeah. Right. Dogs don't want to live in a world of no, where you can't do this, you can't do that. You as a person wouldn't want to live that way. So I think that's one of our goals as trainers is for every time somebody says, I don't want my dog doing X, what is it that you want your dog to do instead? And how can we come in and help teach your dog and inspire your dog to want to offer that good behavior? Perfect. We want to help the audience see the world the way a dog sees it. 
So dogs are noticing everything in their environment through their incredible olfactory glands. And they don't eyes. have the same vision. Yeah, that's why we say how we see the world is like how they smell the world, exactly. how they uh, hear the world because they can smell so much better than us. They can hear they, so much better than us. Yeah, and, and not only better, different. You know, they, they perceive things in a different way, the way we approach, the way we talk to them, and some cues that we don't know we are giving it's completely different things. Like for example, if I bend over a dog, he might understand that as an attack. So once you know these things, you can you know, communicate much better with your dog and have a much better relationship.